The movie starts with Wallace and Teddy recording a piece for their podcast, Not See Party. They are laughing their butts off at a video that catches their attention. It shows a kid with a katana. They name the teenage boy the Kill Bill Kid. In the video, the kid chops off his leg by accident. The silly video has gotten the Kill Bill Kid a lot of attention online. Wallace decides to go to Canada to meet the kid and talk to him for an interview. He drives to the house of the Kill Bill Kid only to find that his family is grieving his demise. The poor guy killed himself with the same katana. At night, in a bar in Canada, Wallace calls Teddy to give him the bad news. He says he hates Canada for not being weird, so the place is painfully dull. Later, in the bar's bathroom, he finds a note from a seemingly exciting man who wants to tell his adventure stories to anyone who would listen. Since the podcast is all about telling stories of misfits from around the globe, meeting this man is an opportunity of a lifetime for Wallace. Also, he can't waste his $550 ticket to Canada. Before going to the man's house, Wallace stops at a convenience store to grab a drink. There, he asks two teenage girls where Bifrost is. One of the teenage girls tell him it's about two hours away. Wallace heads to Bifrost and goes to Pippi Hill, where this man resides. The man, Howard Howe, is seemingly handicapped and moves around in an electric wheelchair. He gives Wallace a cup of tea and tells him a story about how he fought next to Ernest Hemingway and heard him say one of his famous lines, always do sober what you would do drunk. That will teach you to keep your mouth shut. Howard reveals that he has never heard of podcasts before. Wallace says it's more like a radio show but for the internet. The man points to a bottle of liquor that he and Hemingway drank together. Wallace finds some bone mounted on the wall, just a short distance from the bottle. Howard says it's the baculum of a walrus. The job of a baculum is to aid the animal during sexual activity. It's more like a walrus penis. Howard says that a walrus he called Mr. Tusk saved him once when he was lost at sea. Wallace starts to feel dizzy as he listens to the story. He finds out that he has been drugged and passes out. Howard says, it will be all right, Mr. Tusk. While he is passed out, we get a glimpse of Wallace's life before his trip to Canada. His girlfriend, Ali, says he shouldn't go. She liked the old Wallace, who was awkward and had trouble making people laugh, better than the new Wallace who wants to exploit misfits for his gains. Wallace says he knows it's wrong, but he's doing it for the sake of the show. When Wallace wakes up, he is in a wheelchair and doesn't know where he is. Howard tells him that a spider bit him and made his leg swell so bad that he had to be rushed to the hospital. Wallace pulls the cover off his left leg and finds it has been amputated and sewn up. He also notices that he is tied to the chair so that he can't get up and escape. During dinner, Howard makes fun of Wallace's situation and plans to answer the age-old question of whether or not a man is a walrus at heart. Wallace calls Howard a crazy f Howard gets up, walks over to Wallace and slaps him. While Wallace screams, Howard makes weird noises to make fun of him. Meanwhile, we see Ali giving a tearful speech about how she feels about Wallace cheating on her. In another flashback, Wallace admits to cheating on Ali with his fangirls right after the Kill Bill Kid show. Ali has been calling Wallace, but he hasn't picked up. Wallace is trying to call her, and he leaves her a message in which he cries. He says a man named Howard is trying to turn him into an animal. As he sends a message to Teddy, Howard knocks him out from behind. After sleeping with Teddy, Ali gets her phone the following day and listens to Wallace's message. She finds that he's in trouble and goes to wake up Teddy. Howard cuts off more of Wallace's limbs until he has taken all of Wallace's flesh and tongue and turned him into a real walrus with tusks and flippers. Wallace is now chained up and can only jump and scream. Howard tells him about how his parents died when he was a little boy and how he was abused sexually and mentally for years, which made him hate humans. Howard makes him swim around him in the pool. Underwater, Wallace finds what looks like the skeleton of another man who was also turned into a walrus by Howard. Ali and Teddy get to Canada and try to call the police, but they get cut off when Ali says they work for NaziParty.com, which sounds more like the Nazi party to the police officer. A detective, Frank Garmin, whom they meet, tells them that no one named Howard Howe has ever lived in the area. The man gives Ali and Teddy the number of one of his friends, the French-Canadian detective Guy Lapointe. Ali and Teddy meet Lapointe at a fast food restaurant. He tells them that he knew a man who had kidnapped about 23 people and dismembered their bodies. Guy met Howard two years ago when Howard was pretending to be a disabled man named Bartholomew. 
Guy was looking for a lost hockey player, but Howard called to tell him about a spider. Howard said he had a spider inside his room and he wanted Guy to kill it for him. Guy later found the hockey player's torso blocking up a sewer pipe and Howard vanished. He tells Ali and Eddie that most victims were discovered dead. Guy remembers that the mother of one of the victims told him that this unknown killer was trying to make a monster out of his victims. Howard keeps making Wallace suffer by swimming naked with him in the water. He then gives Walrus Wallace a fish as a reward after they are done. Ali, Teddy and Guy go to a convenience store where he shows the same two teenage workers a photo of Wallace and asks if they saw him. The girls recognize Wallace and say he went to Bifrost. They give Guy the notepad where Wallace wrote the address to Bifrost. Guy shades over the pad with a pencil to reveal the address written by Wallace. The girls are fascinated by the trick. Guy says he learned the trick from the movie The Big Lebowski. Howard puts on his walrus flesh suit to fight Wallace after telling him that he had to kill the original Mr. Tusk and eat him to stay alive. He says he regrets not giving him a chance to fight back. He thinks that humans are a horrible species and that walruses are more noble and dignified. He is trying to help Mr. Tusk regain his honor by making his man-walrus experiment fight back against him. He makes Wallace fight him and at the same time, Ali, Teddy and Guy arrive with guns. They hear Wallace yelling and go to where the sound is coming from. Howard takes off the suit and tries to fight Wallace as a man by killing him with a hammer. But Wallace's inner walrus takes over and stabs Howard's foot with his tusk. Before Ali and Teddy come in, he knocks him down and starts to stab him in the chest with his tusks. Guy walks in and points his shotgun at Wallace, but Ali begs him not to shoot. Wallace screams out again and the scene dips to black. One year later, Ali and Teddy meet Wallace at the Manitoba Exotic Animal Sanctuary. Wallace now lives in a small igloo-shaped tent by a dirty pool. Ali throws him a fish, which gets him to come out. Wallace eats the fish and looks at Ali as she calls his name. In one more flashback, Ali says that she has never seen Wallace cry. He believes that crying is for children, adults don't cry. Ali tells Wallace she loves him. A teardrop comes rolling down his cheek. Ali and Teddy say goodbye. Wallace looks at the audience for a moment before returning to his house.